This is Josiah Plays Pillars it's of Eternity. As beautiful as it can be with right. the absence of children. Okay, so I'm here at Cadnua. As you can see, I've got my party here. Um, what are we doing? I know that we're the next order of business is to go now and do. To go now and do the second part of the White March. White March Part 2 is what we're going to do. I only have one camping supply. What's up with that? Well, nonetheless. Nonetheless. Adair has 1,666 health. Compare and contrast to Katie, who has 572 health. <laughs> She's rocking that big four constitution. Alright, so do I, anything else I need to do here? That's main quest. That's the thing. Can't do that without fighting an alpine dragon. Don't know where that is. I assume it's part of part two. Um, then these are side quests that go along with the main story. Can't do that one because that's in an area that I can't go to yet because of the main story. And this I'm putting off until after a bunch of other things, basically. So, let's head out. We've got to go back to... What's it say? In my dream, the army came from the White March near Stalwart. Perhaps the residents will know of it. So I need to seek information about the army in Stalwart. I'm thinking about venturing forth. Any advice for me, game? You must gather your party before venturing forth. Okay, got it. Thanks. I knew he was going to say that. F2. There we go. Double time. Let's move like we're going somewhere. Alright. Been to lots of places, but we need to go to the White March area now. And we need to go to Stalwart Village. Dun dun dun. 24 hour journey. Did I just rest? I'm assuming I just rested, but let's rest again, just in case. Okay. Stalwart Village, 24-hour journey. Your party is considered high level for the content in The White March Part 2. If you would like, the critical path can be increased in difficulty to give you more of a challenge. The rewards you receive will be the same regardless of the option you choose. Your choice cannot be changed once it has been selected. Um, last time I did choose the high level thing. This time I'm tempted not to. I, uh, I've been having a hard time. You know, I, I'm starting to feel more like I'm only interested in seeing the story and not really the hard combat challenges anyway, but no, no. Started this playthrough out on Path of the Damned and even though we're only on hard now, I've got to keep things as much as possible in the spirit of how we started, so we're going to do the high level thing. So that things are reasonably challenging. Reasonably challenging. Got another loading screen. A stalwart loading screen. Stalwart. I think it's stalwart or stalwart. I've heard it both ways. Stalwart. Stalwart. 
I think I tend more towards stalwart as the pronunciation, personally. If secrets whisper here, I shall listen for them. Uh-oh, here we go. While we wait, the enemy grows stronger. And you'd send more of us to die! Well, I'm not gonna stand around. Are you? You've done plenty, Darian! Yeah, Darian. Hey, Noxmoo, how you doing? Noxmoo says... I'd use stalwart like a cow stall. Really? I see. Okay, well, good to know. That's one vote for stalwart. How are you, Noxmoo? You approach the source of the commotion and see a throng of villagers. They're arguing amongst themselves and hurling questions and demands at a lone figure perched above them. A young man stands on a spur of rock, his clenched fist held aloft. Steam rises from his wild hair and flushed face as he shouts to the gathering. Been a week since our people left these gates. A week since the Iron Flail took him. He paces the outcropping, his eyes burning. You see a few scattered nods in the crowd. The Iron Flail, huh? They sound like nice people. Yet we wait here behind our sturdy new walls, hiding in our rebuilt homes. We've done nothing. He brings his fist into his palm with a sharp smack. The crowd erupts, bristling with pointed fingers and pointed words. One woman steps forward, her eyes lock on the young man. Who are you to tell us how to defend our own? You ain't been here two months! Oh, she's got you there, Darian. Several of the others grunt and hoot. You feel a shift in the crowd like a changing tide. I'm not sure if I've ever been in a crowd and felt the need to hoot all of a sudden. Like, I mean... That's, uh, that's a little too owly for me. Hey, an angry mob. See? We're not so far from home. Oh, it's here. It's always got the jokes. And since I got here, I've been working alongside the rest of you. Don't start with that again. A handful of others nod along with him, but they cringe and flinch as another villager joins the fray, shaking his finger at the young orator. Well, it was your idea to send our people to that damned fort in the first place. If it weren't for you and the other leeches that come up with you, we wouldn't be in this mess. Uh-oh, so the people are pissed. The new accuser raises a chorus of furious cries. Darian raises his hands for calm, but the crowd's wrath is snowballing. I'll continue listening. Enough. Enough. Darian waves for calm, but the crowd has worked itself into a frenzy. He scans the assembly, beads of sweat rolling from his temples. His eyes fall on you, and he points. You want to boot all the outlanders from your town? Tell that to the hero of the White Forge. Uh, that would be me. I'm the hero of the White Forge. Hey, <laughs> it wasn't just me. This watcher deserves at least a little credit. <laughs> Dare. I love him. No one seems to notice Adair. Adair really is the fucking hero of my party. He does most of the work. A dozen heads turn in your direction. The villagers recognize you and their eyes widen with hope and reverence. Hey there, Duroski Ruski. How you doing? As it turns out, I do not speak Russian. Or read Russian. So I don't know what you just said, but, uh... You're welcome here. I don't mind you typing stuff in Russian in the chat. I just won't know what it means. <laughs> um... Let's see... What's this about? A bunch of greedy foreigners who want what's ours! Another cry goes up, but it's quieter and more uncertain. Darian quickly jumps in. It's a small army from Rayad Saris. They call themselves the Iron Flail. A small army sounds like a problem. At Darian's mention of the name, the rest of the crowd falls silent. The words trigger a sudden flashback to your dream of the mysterious army and the destruction of Cadnua. 
As the image fades, you see once more the vision of a hundred eyes watching you and something just beyond. Showed up a few weeks after you opened the battery. Demanded we give him the White Forge. He avoids your gaze, scraping his boot against a rock. They're led by a Daric Sendomir. Comes from an old Rayad Saren family. The rumor has it the man's half mad with visions. Claims one drove him here to take the White Forge. Yeah, that seems to be uh, going around in Rayad Saris. People having crazy visions and raising crazy armies to do crazy shit. What with Saint Widewin and all. Alright, so this guy's basically the new Saint Wide One. He just doesn't have the power of a god, presumably. A Darek Sendomir. They're not the only blood suckers around here. Yeah, we have a real problem with mosquitoes in this village, too! The villager glares up at Darien, but most of his fellows are ignoring him by now. Darien raises his voice above the ruckus. Bring the motherfucking ruckus! Bring the motherfucking ruckus! That's a Wu-Tang Clan song. Our crew at the battery locked their doors and told the Iron Flail to go back to Rayad Saris. And what happened then, Darien? Instead, they built a fort in the middle of the wood. Oh. So we sent a committee to reason with them. But that was a week ago. And we haven't seen our people since. A low rumble ripples through the crowd. Darien hesitates. I can only mean one thing. Well, it could mean multiple things, but I think we're all assuming that means they're all dead, which is probably true. He grimaces as the frightened, arguing crowd drowns him out once more. Shrug! Shrug is a great response! And that is the response of my character. Katie's pretty much a stoic, not-give-a-fuck barbarian. So, shrug. Mm. The villagers shout and squawk louder than ever. Maybe we could nudge them into torching their own village. <laughs> She's all about torching stuff. Please, everyone! In the fragile silence that follows, the others turn and look at Darien. Whatever our difference is, we've got to deal with the army at our gates. He looks back to you. You've done a lot for Stalwart already. Many of us wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you. He breaks off, looking as if he'd like to stuff his words back into his mouth. After an uneasy pause, he swallows and continues. What I mean is, if anyone could deal with an army, it's you. Oh yeah, I deal with armies left and right. No problem. I get up in the morning and deal with an army while eating my breakfast. Just show me where the fort is. The Iron Flail cleared a patch of forest north of Durgan's battery. Built their fort there. He nods. It'll be well guarded, so if you can get in without raising an alarm, you may have an easier time of it. The important thing is to deal with the commander. If you can get rid of him, the rest of the soldiers will scatter. I think I've dreamed about this army. What exactly did you see? He watches you with wide, wondering eyes. A murmur ripples through the crowd. I don't remember the dream. It was so long ago in real time. Uh, I'm just gonna say... St Stowart was destroyed. The villagers gasp and exchange panicked whispers. But don't worry, everybody. It'll be fine. It was just a dream. It'll be fine. Then let's just hope there's still time to prevent it. His voice is firm, but his face is ashen. Anyway, we've got our work cut out for us here. He gives the crowd a purposeful look. Grumbling, they start to disperse. While you're out, stop by the battery. Wangra and her team are still repairing the heavy cannons, but they've made a lot of progress elsewhere. Okay. Thought you might like to see how far it's come. I wanted to ask you about something. Haven't been here long, but uh, I'll tell you what I can. He shrugs. He's just trying to be cool like me. He saw me shrug earlier, and now he's doing it. There seems to be a lot of tension around town. Yeah, no shit! They've got an army, invading army on their doorstep. Of course there's tension. <laughs> Before you open Durgan's battery, people tell me Stalwart barely had enough warm bodies to keep the town running. He laughs humorlessly. A bunch of us came when we heard about the White Forge. But now... I think the old-timers would just as soon send us back. 
begins ticking items off on his fingers. We take the best jobs. We don't pay our respects to Andra. We're overcrowding the town. He shakes his head. I get it. Stalwart's changing. Same thing happened in New Yarma when folk moved in from the countryside. We have we have confirmation, Noxmu. He said stalwart, just like just like you said. So you were right. That is the official uh, pronunciation. Stalwart. Same thing happened in New Yarma. Oh, don't even get me started on New Yarma. That fucking place. Oh, I don't know anything about New Yarma. But they can't keep blaming us for everything that goes wrong out here. He sighs, and a steaming cloud escapes his lips. I'm just hoping they'll calm down once the Iron Flail is gone. Tell me about the Iron Flail. They heard about the White Forge and came running. Just like a lot of us did. Only difference is, they brought siege weapons. What did you guys bring? Like, pickaxes? Did you bring pickaxes to a siege weapon fight? As best anyone can tell, they're from the border region near Little Bend, one of the poorest parts of the country. For Raid Saris, well, that's saying something. What is it saying? I don't really understand. These are. This is a poor army? What brought you to Stowart? Work. I was a cobbler in New Yarma, but the city got more crowded every year. Rural types fleeing the legacy. A couple months ago, I heard Stalwart was offering land and opportunity to new settlers, so I figured I'd give it a go out here. For a while, folks seemed glad to have some new blood, but that changed as more and more of us came. Well, good luck with your cobbling, sir. I'm gonna go do some heroic shit. That's all. The Forgotten Army. Okay. A fort has been built to the east of Stalwart. It may house the army I seek. The fort was built by Red Sarens with an interest in capturing Durgan's battery. Stalwart sent a group of delegates from among their residents to try and parlay with the Red Sarens, but the delegates never returned. New quest, the Iron Flail. The villagers of Stalwart are concerned about a band of Red Sarens known as the Iron Flail, which has come to the mountain with the intention of claiming the battery for themselves. A group of delegates was dispatched to negotiate, but they have not returned. Reach the Red Saren Fort. The Iron Flail has erected a fort in the mountain pass to the northwest. Any answers as to the fate of the Stalwart delegates will lie there. Darian asked me to deal with their commander, a Darek Sendemir. Okay. New quest, ready the cannons. I got all kinds of quests. The heavy cannons at the top of the west tower of Jurgen's battery were once a powerful defense. They could be a valuable safeguard for the battery. And me. Find Wengra at Durgan's battery. Darian mentioned that Wengra and her crew are repairing the battery's heavy cannons. It should be worthwhile to check on them. These cannons could be a formidable weapon against the army from my vision. Yeah, cannons sound good. Alright. Well, let's uh, run around town and talk to any everybody and see if anybody else has anything new to say. Yduran, how you doing, my old homie? Yduran's ears perk up hopefully. Have you come to trade? Uh, he doesn't have anything new to say. Show me what you have for sale. Does he have anything awesome and new to sell? I think it's the same stuff that he had before. A bunch of stuff that I sold him. Bitter cut. Lots of stuff that I sold him. I should sell him some more stuff. Oh, Lagafath. I fucking hate those things. I will be most pleased if I don't have to fight any more Lagafath. I should sell some junk. Okay, he's also got... Oh, let me, get, let me get a camping supply. He's got all kinds of... Uh, Nice potions and traps and stuff. 
I don't really feel like selling stuff, though. I mean, honestly, I have a lot of things. Well, let's just sell off some of the junk. Let's see, is there anything here I want to hold on to, maybe? don't really need to sell stuff. I mean, A, I have unlimited stash space, and B, I've got way more money than I'm ever going to use. But on the other hand, having all this crap that I'm carrying around, well, I guess I'm technically not carrying it around if it's in my stash, but I don't know how I'm teleporting things magically to my stash exactly. So many things. Most of which aren't really worth much. I mean, sure it all adds up, but like... Anything on this page that I want to hold on to. I'm basically not going to sell anything unique because it may turn out that I want it or something. Although Grimoires and stuff I will sell. Because I don't plan to use Aloth in combat ever, really. And then we've got, like, a bunch more junk to sell. So many things. So very, very many. This is a lot of money that I'm making here. Just checking to see if there's anything good here. Alright, we'll hold on to this stuff. So there's another 53,000. <laughs> I have so much money, it's ridiculous. Armor. So much armor. So much armor. So very much, but not nearly as much as I had weapons. That was ridiculous. It's been a long time since I sold stuff, so I had quite a bit of junk backed up here. Another 32,000. All these helmets and hoods and shit. These are worth, like, practically nothing. I don't even know why I picked them up. Well, just because I always just loot all. It's a stash, you know? I always just loot all to stash. Alright, we'll keep the rest of this stuff. So we now have almost 300k. 
which is ridiculous. I'm not going to keep all this stuff, all the scrolls and potions and consumables and so forth. And crafting supplies. I have a lot of crafting supplies. 250 vessel bones. All right. This guy doesn't have anything new to say. Let's, uh... Let's just look around real quick. Keeping an eye out. Renegade Guild never said negotiating trade agreements was part of the job. I wish I remembered who the people here were. Well met. Stalwart's changing. Can't expect the Lady of Lament to like it. Who the hell is the Lady of Lament? Hunting party got stuck in a blizzard last week. Andra's mad about her temple. Oh, maybe the Lady of Lament is a name for Andra. I miss home. Haven't eaten anything but fish in weeks. Who is Tarfos? Run for mayor, they said. It's an easy job, they said. I should have stayed in the mines. He notices you approach and his eyes widen. Katie, what brings you back to Stalwart? You're always welcome here. He beams at you. I'm sorry, do I know you? I don't remember you, Tarfos. That name doesn't sound familiar at all. Who the fuck is this guy? Um, how's Stalwart doing these days? We've rebuilt. The Western Palisade is fixed, and some fancy merchant set up shop where Katie's house used to be. He gestures at the temple. We've also got a proper temple to Abaddon again. Never understood why the Andrites stuck around Stalwart in the first place. Temple to Abaddon, huh? Instead of Andra. Interesting. Now that he's the smith god, the golem god. That makes sense now that the White Forge is open. I'm pretty busy, so unless there's something else. What was that about a negotiation? There's a group of merchants from Defiance Bay interested in a trade agreement with Stalwart. Their representative, Nesta, is staying at the Greff's Rest. I've been avoiding her, because I have zero experience with treaties and contracts and all that. I was a miner, not a diplomat. Maybe you could talk to her on my behalf. He looks at you hopefully. As mayor, I'll give you full authority to negotiate on Stalwart's behalf. That's a terrible idea! Why would you do that, Tarfos? I'm just some wandering killer. That's essentially what I am. And you're... Yeah, I don't really know you that well, and you've killed, like, thousands of people, but... You know what? If you want to go negotiate on our behalf as the mayor, I fully empower you. Whatever. What could go wrong? YOLO. <laughs> Fucking Tarfos. That was dumb, Tarfos, but yeah, I'll do it. What makes you think I'd do any better than you in a negotiation? You're the hero of Stalwart, the woman who reclaimed the White Forge. Of course you'd do better than me. I gotta talk to Nesta then. Thank you. As I said earlier, you can find her in the Grave's Rest. Got a new quest, Risk Tolerance. Mayor Tarfos wants me to escort Nesta around Stalwart and help hammer out the terms for a trade agreement with Defiance Bay. Tarfos has no confidence in his own negotiation abilities, so he wants me to handle it instead. Meet Nesta in the Graves' Rest in Stalwart Village. Nesta is waiting for me inside the Graves' Rest. I, I'll have to meet with her to start the trade negotiation. Alright. Good thing I'm freshly greased. That is a good thing. It's always a good thing. What's up, miners? I swear there's something strange going on in the mines. If you're looking for work. What the fuck? People keep talking about hearing voices in the tunnels. Same superstitions we had about the battery. Good work at the battery. Guess we owe our livelihoods. Been having some tough times in the mines. Nothing like the open air. Being in the tunnels too long can really take it out of you. I swear there's something strange going on in the mines. If you're looking for work, Ismi might have something for you. People keep talking about hearing voices in the tunnels. Yeah, all right. So, oh, I can actually go in the mine now, huh? Scattered spots of yellow powder blotch the surface of the barrels. The stench of sulfur lingers in the air. All right, I couldn't go in the mine before. Well, I don't have a reason to go in the mine just at the moment, so I'm not going to because I'm sure it'll be a loading screen and I'm sure I'll get sent in there eventually with a quest, so I'll wait until then. What's up, villagers? People here are so superstitious. One heavy snow and they think the gods are angry. Well met. I don't know why that person has that voice. I, I just thought of settling down here. 
been to Hammond's Emporium yet? Poor Keaton's house used to be. Oh, there's a new shop, huh? So they've actually changed some things about the town since I was last here. Interesting. Oh, let's talk to Ista again. She gave us a quest last time and we did it. Wenga won't get the battery's cannons working. They've been frozen solid for centuries. Oh, Matt. Let's talk to Ista. You know, I haven't quick saved in about 20 million years. Give or take. This is going to be fantastic. Just wait till they hear about this back home. All right, she doesn't have anything new to say. Let's see if anybody... So, oh, I saw there was crossed hammers or something uh, up above the, the doorway, the entranceway as I came in. So I think we had killed off everybody that was in here before, the fake priests of Andra, and it was just empty. So maybe a bunch of new, like, worshippers of Abaddon have moved in and taken over this temple. I think that's what they kind of... Intimated. Oh yeah, look, there's a bunch of anvils and stuff. It looks totally different in here now. This smooth anvil hardly looks like it's seen use. Oh, come on, stupid sword. This warped breastplate is still warm from the forge. What's up, Abaddon Acolyte? Can't talk. Angrim wants us to focus. How about now? I don't think Maska will ever be a good smith. How about you, Abaddon Acolyte? Can't t all right, fine. Let's talk to Maska. She seems to be having problems. Seems to be having problems. Okay, now, you're just pissing me off. She slams her forge hammer down on the unfinished blade with a loud clang. Straighten out, damn you! Temper, Maska! The older priest glares at Maska reproachfully. Sorry, Master, it just slipped out. She takes a deep breath and releases it slowly. What's wrong with the sword? Where to begin? She gestures at the rapidly cooling lump of iron on her anvil. For one, I can't manage to shape the metal no matter how hard I try. Master Engram says, envision a sword. So I'm envisioning really, really hard. I think I'm ending up with a club. Maybe a mace if I'm lucky, but no sword. If my work doesn't improve soon, they'll kick me out of the temple. Can't be a priest if you're not a proper smith. Unless you help me. Maska glances around. I'm not a blacksmith. Oh, that's not the kind of help I'm asking for. I snuck a peek at Master Engram's lore books and came across a ritual that can enchant a forge hammer to boost smithing skill. That's exactly the kind of edge I need. I've already completed the first part of the ritual, crafting the hammer. Unfortunately, the next two parts require travel to the Deerwood, and there's no way Master Engram will let me leave anytime soon. I'll complete the forge hammer ritual for you. That's great! She hands you a forge hammer. That hammer actually turned out alright. The first place you'll need to go is the Shrine of Abaddon in Crucible Keep. I was just there. That's in the first fires district in Defiance Bay. I've never been there myself. Just place the hammer at the shrine and it should get blessed. Or something. Yeah, I've been there. I know exactly where it is. After that, you'll need to find the Shrine of Magron in Magron's Fork. I also know exactly where that is. It's not far from Defiance Bay. At the north of the city, I think. Do the same thing with the hammer at that shrine, then head back here. I'd better get back to it before Master Engram gets annoyed with me. Why did you decide to become an acolyte of Abaddon? It's a family tradition, one I've managed to keep going. She glares at the unfinished sword on her anvil. Barely. Farewell. New quest, Iron and Flame. Maska, an acolyte of the Temple of Abaddon in Stalwart Village, wants me to complete a ritual that will bless her forge hammer and boost her abilities as a smith. Her current skill level is quite poor, and she's afraid she'll be kicked out of the temple if she doesn't show improvements soon. She asked for my help with the ritual since she's unable to leave Stalwart. Bless the hammer at the Shrine of Abaddon in Crucible Keep in First Fires. Travel to Crucible Keep in First Fires and bless the hammer at the Shrine of Abaddon in the Keep. We can do that. What's going on over here? Oh, I can pick a got pick a lock real quick. Finished. I'm not gonna steal their stuff. Oh, Durgan iron ingots. 
See, I've already read this book. Have I read Abaddon's Hands? I don't think I've ever read Abaddon's Hands. This doesn't sound familiar. Of all the stories of all the gods, no doubt one of the most charming is the legend of Abaddon's Hands. In some cultures, Abaddon's hands are tiny, cheerful creatures that hide in the walls and in the cracks between paving stones. In others, they are silent men of stone who roam distant lands. In all such tales, however, they are Abaddon's constructs, built in his image to continue his good work of creating strong and wondrous things in this world. Thus, upon spying a, a mighty mountain peak, or a row of Adra pillars, or another natural marvel, Parents and nursemaids will tell young children that these are the work of Abaddon's hands. Such is the appeal of Abaddon as a deity, as it is through the legend that we recognize familiar shapes in the natural world. Thus, when we see a landform that resembles a colonnade, or an arched gate, or a mighty home, we see a hand and a purpose at work that is not unlike our own. And while Abaddon's own identity as a construct is alienating to some, to many of us, his crude yet practical shape is comforting. While the other gods take the form of birds, beast, and sea, Abaddon takes the shape of our most common tools and constructions. His debasement in a body of iron elevates our own works and labors and offers us a grand hope. For if a god could reveal himself out of iron, what wonders might Kith create with their own hands? Cool. All right. It's been forever since I found a new lore book that I hadn't already read. Milla's drawing. This lightly singed piece of paper has a charcoal drawing on the front. Examine. Oh. Wow, that's quite artistic. It's got some mountains and some people and some trees, I guess. I don't know. Some water, some, like, icebergs or something. I don't know. Some sour bonies. All right. Finally, this shrine to Abaddon is smooth and shiny as if it were made recently. Let's talk to Engram. See what he has to say. Engram nods at you and smiles in recognition. Oh, the Kendler of the White Forge. We owe you a great debt for the industry and faith you've restored here. Welcome to the Temple of Abaddon. This used to be a temple to Andra. He tilts his head to one side. Back when this was a dying, forgotten place. But the clerics who tended it left, as is customary of their goddess. Actually, they didn't leave. I killed them. <laughs> the throngs who have since come to Stalwart sought a more practical deity. What do you do here? I lead this temple and guide the acolytes in matters both spiritual and mundane. He indicates the forge and anvils. Worshippers of other gods pray or meditate. We Abaddonians venerate our god through the act of smithing. Alright. Sure. Our doors are always open, and our forge always alight. How may I help? I'm not going to tell on Masca. So that's it. Farewell. I guess that's all I can do in here for now. We'll continue to explore the new stalwart and see what else has changed and what new quests and such we can pick up here. Get us a nice loading screen again. All right. I'll keep an eye out. Villager. Heard that already. Another villager. Ever thought of settling down here? What's up, other villagers? If you're looking for Mila, tell Royce I haven't seen her. Someone needs to keep a better eye on that girl. 
Darian's from New Yarma. What does he know about our problems? Hashtag stalwart problems. Pleasure to see you. Whereas Darian is straight out of New Yarma. <laughs> just said, did you just make a straight out of Compton reference in this game? Yes, I did. Um, Hatsik Party got stuck in a blizzard last week. Andra's mad about her temple. Yeah, we heard that too. Yeah, I would imagine Andra's mad. They straight up just took her temple and made it a temple to a different god. Of course, there's a lot of evidence of that that's taken place in history in our real world as well. Like the Pantheon in Rome. Stalwart fishery. Let's see what's going on in the fishery. If there's anything new. Maybe someone in the fishery now has a new mission for me. More, more loading screen. Fishery. Oh, this place. Not a lot going on in here. Pleasure to see you. Wow. There really ain't shit going on at the fishery. Well, I'm glad I came in here. Hold on, is it a day-night thing? No, let's just go. So, we are loading on the screens. Let's see, what else is happening in this town? Here's Aska. Who's Aska? Is this a new person or somebody that I just forgot? Guess we'll find out. A well-built dwarven woman stands before you, one hand on her head, and the other holding a few sheets of paper. Three complaints of blights in Whitestone Hollow. And who are these people? Magrants faithful? Great, another pack of religious zealots. It's like they're popping up out of the snow these days. She glances up at you. Oh, sorry, Katie. Just a little preoccupied. Is this somebody I have met before then, apparently? Things may have quieted down some with the ogres lately, but there's been no shortage of new trouble. Or work for those interested. Just saying. Who are Magrant's faithful? Bandits and horse thieves, far as I can tell. Led by a woman named Radwith. Problem is, their little group keeps growing. And they've started tearing through some of the smaller villages. So it's a group of bandits. They were last spotted by Searing Falls. And trouble is, rumor is they're headed in our direction. Star Wars just getting its bearings. We can't afford this kind of trouble. Bring me Rudwood's head, and I'll see you a little richer for it. Don't really need to be a little richer, but uh, I'm always up for a quest. You mentioned blights. The Terror of Whitestone Hollow. It's a grand blight that turned up after the avalanche. Real disaster, that. A great big heap of snow, right on top of one of our main trade routes. We can't start fixing the roads until we get the blights out of there. Can't exactly ask you to bring back this thing's head. But word is the Terror's last victim was a caravan master. Turns out the fellow always wore a certain brooch. Figure it's somewhere in that monstrosity's belly. Bring me the brooch and I'll take it as proof you've handled the blight. Sound fair? Sounds good. Couple new quests then. Bounty for Magrans Faithful. Brigands, calling themselves Magrans Faithful, have been pillaging small towns throughout Deerwood. Given Stalwart's recent influx of wealth, they worry they may be the band's next target. Kill Rodwith at Searing Falls and take her head. The Grants Faithful have been heading north and were last seen at Searing Falls. They're led by a woman named Rodworth. Searing Falls is really fucking far away from here. Like, super far away. Bounty, the Terror of Whitestone Hollow. 
A recent avalanche killed dozens of travelers and tradesmen on the road to Whitestone Hollow. Their souls formed a blight that now haunts the countryside. Destroy the terror of Whitestone Hollow and recover the brooch within it. Asuka believes the Caravan Master's distinctive brooch is frozen inside the blight. After I kill the creature, I can retrieve this brooch to claim my reward. Alright. Shh. Seen Kern? He looked upset. Tarfos isn't a bad mayor, but I liked having Renengild in charge. That thing is still here? That's that seal that I put down on the ground with Durance so long ago? It's still here. That's amazing. That is amazing. This place got any sort of entrance to it? No. Okay, there's a villager. What do we have here? Hammond's Emporium. Okay, this used to be Kitty's house, the house that burned down, and now it's been turned into some sort of store yurt. <laughs> Let's check it out. I got, I got, I'm in the mood for a loading screen. How about y'all? I'm in the mood for a loading screen. Would I interest you in a new blade? Maybe. Maybe Hammond's Emporium. There's a villager. We've heard that. That person's got a bunch of cocoa. You can see your own reflection in these shields. This looks like stalwart from the road to Deerwood. Ah, cool painting. I heard there was work in stalwart, but the locals don't seem to like us. Cheap perfumes line the bottom shelf. Pleasure to see you. These identical Abaddon figurines are all of equally poor quality. So, I don't know if his material, if his, uh... Goods, they don't really seem that good. Do they? He does not put the good in goods. He puts the Argon in bargain. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. It's... I just said it. The shopkeeper's clothes seem a little nicer, if not terribly warm, compared to what you've seen around Stalwart. His hair is immaculately coiffed, and his rosy cheeks look like they've barely been touched by the mountain winds. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking this guy is like, uh, Gilmore. Is that his name? Gilmore? Gilmore's Glorious Goods? If you've ever watched, uh, if you've ever watched Critical Role... The, the show where Matt Mercer, it's on Geek and Sundry, where Matt Mercer DMs for a bunch of voice actors. He's the most awesome DM of all time, basically. And he's got this character named Gilmore that runs a store called Gilmore's Glorious Goods. And this guy already is, is making me think of Gilmore. So I might do a Gilmore-ish voice for him. Welcome, welcome. I've got arms and armor, all top quality. Or perhaps you'd like to see potions. Stowart Positive 3. Always a pleasure to meet respectable company out here, anyway. Show me what you have for sale. Twin Sting. Soulbound crossbow, two handed. What? Binds with Rogue Ranger or Cypher. It does some damage. It's exceptional. Inflicts some d damage over time on hit. Twin Sting is a crossbow with an unusual design. It is built to fire two bolts before requiring a reload. Few are the practical uses of such a weapon that would be worth the trade-off of the extra weight. This item, however, was built to fulfill a very particular need. Hmm... That's tempting, actually. 
It's tempting. Just to find out what happens when you bind it and what special abilities it gets and stuff. Bunch of junk. The colored coat. What do we have here? Some brigandine. Less armor speed penalty grants wicked briars when endurance drops below 51% once per encounter. Oh, that's pretty cool. The right lord Laurel Tanring found himself in the unenviable position of being caught in a war between two branches of his own family, fought over hunting rights to certain lands that were jointly owned. While most family members found it easy to choose a side, Laurel could not bring himself to take up arms against anyone in his large extended family. He had this brigantine decorated in two tones, each representing the opposing family banners, and had the local spell rights imbue it with the power to raise a wall of briars which he hoped to use to keep those sides divided on the battlefield. When the two sides met in combat, he rode out to the center of the battlefield, raising briar patches and waving to both sides, sounds like a nutter, calling out for them to stop their mad feud. Unfortunately, his decorative brigandine had the opposite effect of what he intended, and each side read it as being the uniform of the other. He was felled by a rain of arrows from both directions. When his family realized he had died, they put their battle on hold and discussed peace. Then they began to argue about where Laurel would be buried, and the feud began anew. Alright, that's a pretty funny story. What else? Seal of Faith. We've found Seals of Faith in the past. Ring of the Salonan, we've found these in the past. Those are only used by Priest and Wizard, which we don't have. Arguis Adra's Helm. Ooh. Plus three Resolve Helm. That might be good for my tank. Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to buy this. When Grafe Admeth Hadrit passed the Ten Years Treaties on the anniversary of the War of Black Trees... He outlawed the looting of Ingwithan ruins. While this was a popular move among the Glanfathans, as well as the frontier villagers who frequently found themselves the subject of the tribe's vengeance, it was an unwelcome change for the traders and adventurers who had made their living selling Ingwithan artifacts. Quite a few vendors, however, took to commissioning and selling replicas. Many fakes were so skillfully made that even scholars had difficulty distinguishing between them, and ciphers were sometimes hired to attest to the authenticity of high-value objects. Ardoes Adra, Adra armor, actually was taken from ruins near the court of Boeing Ashes, but it so closely resembled two known fakes that it famously passed through Defiance Bay and Chenze and Salona before an Animancer and Barda recognized its authenticity. All right. So let's say we're going to buy that. Plus 25% healing received. Wow. It carries many scars helm. Oh, that goes with some armor that we found. I mean, this goes with her armor. She's literally wearing the Aguas whatever. No, get, get off me, fine scale armor. See, that's the armor she's actually wearing. But I still think I'm going to give the helm to him, not her, because I want him to have the extra resolve. What? What, uh... What helm is she wearing? Why can't I compare now? Oh, because she can't wear a helm! That's right, because she's a bird-like. A bird god-like. This is the same story as there is on the armor, so I'm not going to read it again. Sanguine Plate's helm. We have the Sanguine Plate also. She wore that for a while. I think he wore it for a while, too. Same story as the Sanguine Plate, I think. What is this? Wirthoneg. A weak form of mead. Wirthaneg is found only in Red Saris or on Red Sarens when they travel. Due to Red Saris' strict laws about intoxicants, Wirthaneg has relatively low alcohol content. 
priests of Aethus regularly visit, visit distilleries to ensure they are following the letter of the law, but it is common for well-traveled Rancerans to spike their supply when they travel to neighboring countries. Huh, that's nice. Some wit deer jerky in the eastern parts of Red Saras, thick with birch trees and white flowers. White deer, called wit deer in hill speak, are common. Locals hunt them and make a popular jerky from the meat. That's not bad. Bunch of nice scrolls and traps, powerful scrolls and traps, powerful potions, drugs, all the drugs, all the gems. All kinds of- man, this person has some fucking stuff. Like, all the crafting ingredients you've ever wanted, essentially. Okay. Well, we're gonna buy this helm. And we're gonna give it to him. Doesn't really match his armor, it matches her armor, but I think it looks cool. It looks cooler than the helm he had before. It looks kind of Spartan-y. Alright, well we've done enough here. So, that is going to do it for this episode. Let me just do this loading screen real quick. And we'll end this episode here. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. <laughs>